Hi, uh, this is Fur Puss from the Anime Studio Forum, and um, I made this little uh, test animation um, a few days ago um, of my character Buddy Riff. Uh, my goal was to be able to combine head rotation um, on two axes and also uh, combine that with dialogue, and so this is what I came up with. Um, so anyway, I thought I would go through the file with you. I've been asked by a few people to uh, do a real quick tutorial on how I went about doing this. So anyway, um, I'm going to go through the layers uh, real quick here uh, just to show you how I set this thing up. Um, basically, I've got um, in the head layer, um, I've got my uh, brows as switch layers. I think I counted up, I had um, 10 separate brows, okay. Eyes, I had five different eyes. Eyes open, closed, uh, a happy blink, uh, a squint, and just uh, regular eyes open. Um, then in my mouth, I have about, I think I counted 13 different mouth shapes. Um, I felt that that was the minimum that was needed. So, and the way I did this um, was to just start with a few simple mouth shapes and I would run my animation um, against the soundtrack and whatever mouth shape seemed to be missing, I would just go in and I would draw it. Uh, and I just created as many um, mouth shapes as I needed. Um, there's actually a lot more mouths. Um, and anyway, uh, I don't have time right here to get into a big discussion all about mouth shapes. I could probably talk for a half an hour on that alone, and maybe at some point I'll do that. Um, so I'm just going to uh, sort of click off some of these to show you. Um, where all the layers are now. You can see that this whole, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off those ears. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna turn off, off everything here. The nose off, I'm gonna close the glasses. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, basically what I did was, um, for my mouse, I included the entire lower half of the face because of the fact that um, the the jaw has to open, the beard has to animate, uh, and the face has to widen and narrow as the mouth narrows and widens. So that's why I did it that way uh, instead of just uh, say putting the mouths on top of a, a head because that whole bottom half of the head needs to animate uh, to give you a nice kind of squishy, squashy, organic uh, feeling to it. So um, anyway, the next thing, let's, let me just turn back all this stuff back on again here. Okay. So I did all my, my eye shapes, my brow shapes, my mouth shapes, all in the front view. Then uh, what I did is I created my first bone layer, uh, or my bone action actually. And um, so then what I had to do was to get my three quarter view over here, I, I had to drag every single eye layer eyebrow layer, the glasses, the beret, the, the nose, the ears, the mouth, um, the beard, and everything. So that's about, oh, I don't know, probably about 20, oh, um, 20 layers that I had to, you know, just to get that one view with the three-quarter angle. And then same thing when I rotated it in the other direction. This is on the y-axis. So I had to drag over all the points and, you know, correct the 
perspective of the glasses and the eyes and everything. I'm sure a lot of you have been through this too. Um, now, ordinarily, what I had been doing before that is I actually would sit down with pencil and paper and I would draw exactly what each shape uh, looked like in a three-quarter view or, or an up and a down view and then I'd scan it and I would bring it in and that gave me a kind of a template to work over. Uh, but in this case, it was a fairly simple um, designed character so that now I'll just wing it, you know, and um, it's a kind of a tedious thing where you have to go back and forth. You have to take your best guess as to exactly where the features are going to be. And then you test it, you know, by um, moving your lever back and forth and seeing whether the character looks solid or not. And if there's any weird irregularities, you know, you have to go back and fix them. So that that was pretty time consuming. Um, also, I did the same thing for the up and down. So uh, I got that work pretty well. But the, the really cool thing I thought was the fact that you can combine these. Um, and so now I've got any number of different head angles uh, that I can use. So um, what else? Let's see. So also I did a bone here for his head angle. I didn't use it very much. I used that very subtly. And then I made another one so he can lean into camera and go back a little bit. You know, I should have done something on the body, but I didn't. Uh, and then, this is a really important thing that I, that I did. This is a stretch and squash bone. Okay, now, when you're watching the um, animation play, you don't really see it, but you feel it. So I'm just going to run it real quick here. It, it means dig. Like, if you don't dig and you say dig, I dig where you're at. Like, I'm the wrong cat, it's the wrong word. Dig? Dig means dig. So, anyway, um, dig, dig, dig. that's a, it's a good way to give your animation um, a more organic feel. I think a lot of the problems with this kind of animation is the fact that um, the characters look rather wooden. Uh, they look like they're made out of cement or something like that. Um, so... Um, I like to put a lot of distortion into my animation. So um, anyway, I think that gives you a rough idea of how I went about doing that. And um, it was a lot of fun doing it. And um, I guess I'll see all you folks back on the uh, Anime Studio Forum.